Hello beautiful earth angels, welcome to Team Joanna, welcome to today's transmission. I have a lot of energy with me. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get it all out in a way that I can fit this into a short video, but maybe this is going to be part one. I don't know. We'll see. Um, if you are new to this, I hope you stay. I hope you enjoy what you hear. And if you do, maybe give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend or two. Uh, maybe they will find this helpful. My ultimate goal, my ultimate intention is, is to help us all release ourselves from our internal prison. And I do this by connecting with higher beings whose awareness and perceptions of who we are is far greater than our own. And that's because our own perception is a perception uh, based on the perspective of being a human being. And uh, to be a human being is, well, by the very nature, is to be limited in some way. Um, if you are watching this, chances are quite high that you at least have heard the idea of uh, ego, the shadow self, things like uh, shadow aspect, um, shadow self. I'm going to use the word shadow self as it's in a description. And um, so why is embracing your shadow so important? First of all, let me give you our interpretation of what we mean by shadow. When I say we, I mean Joanna and my team. The information that I project is not my information, it does not come from something I've learned, it's, it's something that's coming through me. So sometimes I have a little bit of difficulty understanding what I'm saying. So bear with me. That's what channeling does. It sometimes... <sighs> You channel information you know nothing about and it makes the brain um, act a little funny. So what is a shadow self? A shadow self is, or a shadow is opposite of light. So in terms, let's use this in the context of being us as, a, as beings. We are light. We are all light. We come from light. The, our source is light. Uh, information is light. Everything is light. It's frequency. The reason why we have a shadow in the first place is because something stands in the way of that light. And whatever is standing in the way is creating the shadow. So effectively, shadow is the opposite, or shadow self is almost, well, is the opposite of the true self, which is light. It is perceived mostly as aspects rooted in fear, rooted in lower vibrations. It is um, an aspect that is tied to the ego, so it's the perception from the human perspective. And uh, it only sees what it sees based on its perception, which is based on its experience in its environment. Why is it important to integrate shadow? or to embrace shadow. Effectively, once we embrace our shadow, we can, we can then integrate our shadow. So let's just back up for a moment. What is the purpose of integrating our shadow? Well, to integrate, I looked up the words because it was important for me to, to know for myself, what's the true meaning of integration? A synonym, a synonym for integration is also unification. So the pur purpose of integrating our shadow self is to, in essence, become more aligned with the truth of who we are, which is light. We shy away from our shadow self. That's because it often does not feel good. Shadow is an aspect of you that is based on a certain perception and uh, some shadows are known consciously, but most shadows are not known. They're unconscious. And these shadow selves are based in these li this life, but also in other lifetimes. Ultimately, it doesn't matter where the shadow started. Point is, we are in the space, energetically speaking, in this human experience, in this timeline, where we can effectively integrate our shadows by recognizing our shadow self. 
And to recognize the shadow self is to not run away from it. And for most of us, myself included, at least in the past, we have a tendency to run away from our shadow. We want to run away from it. We want to kill it. We want to get rid of it. We want to abandon it. We want to reject it. We want to uh, pretend it's not there. Anything other than to embrace it. Why? Because the shadow aspect, for the most part, does not make us feel good. But the shadow aspect is part of your essence. Not the true essence in terms of light, but it's part of you as a human being. So trying to get rid of a shadow is the same as trying to get rid of one of your arms. Good luck with that one. Well, for one, you wouldn't want to do it. In other words, the shadow aspect or the shadow self serves a purpose. And once we understand the purpose of our shadow self, we can then begin the process of integrating it into our being. Again, what is the purpose of integration? To become more unified, to become more whole. Rephrase, not to become more whole because we are already whole. It's to remember and therefore to experience that we are whole. In other words, your shadow self, I'm going to say it, it's an illusion. It's a creation. It's a product of the mind based on experience, of course, but your shadow self is in the mind. It lives in the mind. What the shadow self does, well, it does many things, but what the shadow self does, it, um, if you look at it this way, if you look at your shadow self, which is things you generally stay away from, things you don't want to feel, things you are afraid of looking at, things that uh, you get the picture. If, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm just going to continue. Because everything in life has a purpose. We may not always, and usually we do not understand what the purpose is. In fact, a lot of the times we see no sense in anything that's going on. And that's because our perception, again, is human-based. Okay? We are speaking through the eyes of those who perceive this world by not being a human being. In other words, having a different perception, a higher point of view. And from the higher point of view, things that don't make sense to us from this perspective are perfectly clear and make a lot of sense from a higher perspective. So let's get him back to the shadow self. Because shadow is there for a reason. Generally, a shadow aspect of you is trying to protect you from something. So in essence, if you think of your shadow as your friend, your friend, which does this in a specific way that you may not like, but your friend doing trying to protect you in a specific way is there to work for you. Now, you on conscious level may not know that, in fact, most of the time, you feel it's something that you need to get rid of. However, you will never to be able to get rid of something that is inherently a part of you. What you will be able to do, and in fact, what you are probably already doing, if not now, then you will be shortly. You are uh, looking at your shadow or by wanting to get wanting to get rid of uh, your shadow, it's again, it's like trying to get rid of part uh, uh, your arm. Not only can you not do it because it's a part of you, you cannot get rid of something that's a part of you. You can shift it, you can change it, you can transform it, okay? In other words, you can transform your fear or your shadow self into a workable situation where this part of you becomes your ally, not your enemy. Although it's never been your enemy, it's just, this is how you feel. Also, when you try to get rid of a shadow aspect of yourself, 
you are trying to push away or deny something that is inherently a part of you. Right? And to describe it differently, it's no different than you constantly being rejected. So trying to get rid of a part of you is like trying to reject an aspect of you. That is definitely not the way towards unification because doing that, getting rid of something that's part of you leads to further separation, inner separation and inner conflict. And if you are watching this, chances are you know that we are all seeking balance and we are moving towards greater balance. Greater balance in many ways, certainly through our perception. So to achieve greater balance, to achieve a greater sense of unification, I just looked at the recording, it was 1111. Um, to, to, to gain a greater sense of unification, we need to allow ourselves to look at our shadow selves, to look at the things we don't like to look at, to look at the things we are afraid of, and to look at those things as our friends. These are our friends that are trying to protect us. It's just that our relationship with it right now is, well, none. The only relationship you have with your shadow self is how quickly can I get rid of it? You can't. You're not supposed to. If you were not supposed to have it, you wouldn't have it to begin with. It's there for a reason. Understanding that reason will serve you greatly in transforming that shadow self into a workable situation where you, it's an ally. I'd like you to think of it that way, okay? So what's your biggest shadow? We have many shadows. There is nothing wrong with shadow self. We are here to experience life based on the fact that we forget who we are. So we forget that we are light. And we, if, we, and if whatever is blocking that light creates effectively shadows. We are here to experience shadows. It's okay. It's okay. We're, exper we're here to experience both. That's what balance is about. So we are all seeking greater unification. One of the best ways that you can unify within your own self is to recognize your biggest shadow and ask yourself this question, how is this shadow helping me? The first instinct is going to be this. It's not. And this is where I always say, or they always say, it's impossible. It's impossible. You always get something from it. You may not get what you think you would like to get from it, or you may not think of it as getting it because you don't like it, but there is absolutely something you are getting from it. It's there, it's there serving a reason, a purpose. And it's your job to figure out why is it there? What's the purpose of having this shadow? And effectively, you're here to transform this shadow. Okay? Remember, shadow is the result of something blocking your visibility of who you truly are which is light. Okay. For example, if one of your shadows is that you have fear of failure, that's because you are recognizing yourself in a way that is completely different from the truth of who you really are. Because who you really are is impossible to fail. Your idea of failure is based on your ego. Okay. And the ego self is a, a byproduct of our environment. There's nothing good or bad about it. It's all good. Sometimes it doesn't feel so good. So what's your biggest shadow? And how can you learn to accept it and then transform it and then integrate it? I've been working with shadow for probably about two decades now. I freaking love working with the shadow self. It's just my fascination, but I now understand very clearly that my purpose here is to understand the shadow self so that I can help myself and then help you integrate your shadow so that we become much more whole. Not that we're not whole, is that we become, we feel much more whole. We experience the feeling of being much more 
whole. Whole meaning there's nothing missing. We're complete. And with that, I'm going to leave you. If you would like to get a hold of me to help you with your shadow work, you can reach me at uh, joannathehealer.com and there's the information there somewhere. Take care of you and uh, take care of you. Yes, good, take good care of you and see you soon.